so once we say that yes at a particular depth my spt n value is determined then we should uh, now understand what are the different corrections that are to be applied for that determined spt value of that uh, soil okay so we are going to talk about two corrections that we are going to be applying for your spt n value that you have calculated one correction is what is called as overburden pressure correction and the other correction is what is called as your dilatancy correction okay so what <coughs> what actually this uh, overburden correction mean and uh, what actually the dilatancy correction mean let us try to understand let's say for example if i am looking at some uh, soil which is there below the ground if the soil is said to be uniform uniform in the sense the property of the soil is same throughout so if the soil is said to be uniform soil or at least if it is a layered soil also let's say this is soil layer 1 and next i have got some soil layer 2 and then i have got some layer 3 and so on at least within that soil layer 1 the property of the soil should be same within that soil layer 2 the property of the soil should be same within that uh, soil layer 3 the properties of the soil should be same like let's say c5 parameters of the soil and the gamma value of the soil should be same at least for that particular uh, soil layer but however what is going to happen is if you can if, if you understand uh, in the case of your sandy soil deposits in the case of sands if you go on to calculate what is your uh, effective stress or maybe your total stress in case if you are trying to talk about how do we calculate the total stress we calculate the total stress as simply unit weight of the soil into the corresponding depth at which you are calculating the total stress so with increase in depth what is happening to your total stress total stress is continuously increasing in the way why is this uh, total stress is continuously increasing because the yeah uh, in terms of the total stress i understand but in terms of the confining pressure when i uh, want to know what is mean by confining pressure let's say for example i am looking at a soil element here and i am looking at a soil element here the type of soil at the position a and the type of soil at position b is same okay but however the amount of confining pressure existing on this soil sample a and the amount of confining pressure that is nothing but the lateral pressure or the horizontal pressure a horizontal stress acting on that soil sample so the amount of confining pressure acting on the soil sample a and soil sample b they are not going to be same why they are not going to be same because the amount of vertical stress at point a and amount of vertical stress at point b they are not same okay so as the vertical stress is varying the amount of confining pressure existing at different depths is also going to vary within the same soil strata the amount of confining pressure is changing the amount of lateral stress what is uh, getting developed on that uh, soil element is also getting changed so which indicates that the relative density of the soil is also changing if the phi value is same then the relative density of the soil throughout the depth should be same but however as the confining pressure acting on the soil is different at different depths then automatically the relative density of the soil is also going to be different okay that's the reason why though the soil is uniform you will not be required to give same number of blows for every 15 centimeters depth of penetration maybe first 15 centimeters depth of penetration might require only 10 blows next 15 centimeters depth of penetration might require 12 blows why is the change in number of blows coming into picture because of change in the confining pressure effect at different depths so here that's the reason why we should apply what is called as an overburden correction in the case of your uh, sandy soil deposits okay so in the case of sandy soil deposits we go on to apply this what is called as this overburden correction for the reason that the relative density of the soil is not going to be uniform throughout the depth of the soil though the soil properties are same within that particular uh, depth okay so we have got different uh, empirical relations which are given by different people for uh, uh, applying what is called as an overburden correction in the case of the sandy soil deposits 
okay and the second correction what i was trying to talk about first correction is what is called as your overburden correction and the second correction is what is called as your dilatancy correction so what does this dilatancy correction means so dilatancy correction is nothing but it is the effect of the water table okay so dilatancy correction is what is called as the effect of your water table so particularly this dilatancy correction is to be applied in the case of your uh, soils which are said to be fine sandy soils or maybe in the case of silty soil deposits this dil uh, dilatancy correction is to be applied in case if my soil what i am looking at is a fine sand so if i say it is a fine sand yes obviously i should apply what is called as your overburden correction as well as i should apply what is called as your dilatancy correction for the spdn value which i have which i have determined for that particular uh, fine sandy soil strata so which correction is to be applied first are we going to apply uh, two corrections independently or are we going to calculate the original spdn value from the field and for that calculated spdn value which correction is to be applied first and which correction is to be applied next to that corrected value okay so first we determine the spdn value from the field in case if the overburden correction is required to be applied for that particular uh, spdn value which depends on the type of soil in which that spt test is conducted so first we should apply what is called as overburden correction and after applying the overburden correction let's say n or nr is what is the recorded value what you have got from your uh, spt test are your measured spdn value from the uh, spt test and uh, if overburden correction is required to be applied then i'll apply the overburden correction to this measured value okay n dash let me call it as your uh, corrected value for overburden correction in case if you have the presence of water table because the spt test what you have conducted is below the position of the water table and that soil in which the spt test is conducted if it is a fine sand then i should even apply your dilatancy correction so why is this dilatancy correction is uh, required typically what happens is when you are performing this spt test in the case of fine sand uh, fine uh, sandy deposits are in uh, silty soil deposits as the soil grains do not possess cohesion between the particles as you are repeatedly giving the impact load because of which the sampling tube is getting penetrated into the soil deposit soil strata there so mostly the soil would exist in what is called as an undrained condition in the process of that undrained condition what you are going to be seeing there is uh, yeah as you are continuously giving the impact load you are going to come across with the effect of what is called as dilatancy dilatancy indicates the volume of the soil starts uh, increasing because if the soil deposit is a dense soil deposit in which you are continuously giving the impact load so because of that continuous energy what you are trying to induce in the soil you are going to see the effect of uh, dilatancy coming into picture which indicates that increase in volume happening and because of that increase in volume what you are going to see is negative pore water pressures are getting built in the soil if the negative pore water pressures are building in the soil what is going to happen to the shear strength of the soil shear strength of the soil would increase because of the uh, negative pore water pressures which are uh, building in the soil but to be specific that so called negative pore water pressures should not have developed if the negative pore water pressures have not developed then the shear strength of the soil should have not increased if the shear strength of the soil has not increased then the spdn value what you are trying to determine there should have uh, not been that much high so what we say ultimately is because of the effect of that dilatancy which are coming across in the soil deposits which are fine sand or silty soil below the position of the water table you have this correction that is to be applied for your spdn value because the measured spt values are not the correct values okay so those spdn values are to be corrected for even what is called as your dilatancy correction so whenever both the corrections are required to be applied for that particular soil first correction what is to be applied for spdn value what is determined from the field is overburden correction and for that 
SPT N value what you are getting after applying the overburden correction then we'll see how much is my corrected value that I have got for my uh, overburden correction in case if this corrected value if it is greater than 15 if that corrected SPT N value for one feet depth of penetration uh, after applying the overburden correction if it is greater than 15 then uh, according to Terzaghi and Peck they have given some uh, expression for finding out the further corrected n value for what is called as the dilatancy effect so uh, we are going to calculate your uh, further corrected spt n value after applying what is called as your dilatancy correction so this dilatancy correction is applied when the spt n value what you are looking at even after applying your overburden correction is greater than 15. In case overburden correction is not required for that soil, if the soil is a silty soil, in silty soil we don't apply your overburden correction. So in case if the overburden correction is not required to be applied for the SPTN value, then we simply go on to apply only your dilatancy correction. If at all there is an effect of water table. If there is no effect of water table, but it is only uh, what you are looking at is a sandy soil, but there is no presence of the water table. In the sense, the SPT test what is conducted is not in the soil which is there below the water table position so in such case i can simply go on to apply only your overburden correction so i have to be very clearly understanding whether i should be applying both overburden correction or dilatancy correction or only overburden correction or only dilatancy correction depending on the condition of the soil in which that particular spt test is conducted okay so let's quickly come across to understand uh, what are the different uh, correlations that are available in the literature we have different uh, um, relations which are given by different people for uh, applying what is called as your overburden correction okay so uh, we'll uh, try to see some of those uh, corrections what are given by uh, some of the eminent people so one of such uh, overburden correction that we are going to be coming across which is given by gibbs and uh, holtz okay gibbs and holtz has proposed an overburden correction rather this expression should be written as cn which is equal to 350 by sigma naught dash plus 70. this sigma naught with bar at its head are either we write it as sigma naught dash both are one and same what is that notation sigma naught bar or sigma naught dash indicating means it is indicating you the effective overburden pressure or rather i should say it is your effective vertical stress what you are going to be having in the soil at that depth where you have performed your spt test if i say spt test is conducted at a depth of two meters so at that depth of two meters below the ground surface how much is my effective vertical stress that is what is my effective overburden pressure okay so if you look at if you compare this expression and this expression this cn what does this cn indicate cn indicates my uh, correction factor okay this cn is otherwise also represented as the ratio of nc by nr okay the ratio of this nc by nr is nothing but otherwise represented as your cn okay what does that cn means it is your uh, correction factor once the correction factor is calculated then my uh, correct n value or corrected n value is nothing but we write it as correction factor into your uh, n value what you have determined from your spt test okay so this is how uh, we go on to calculate your corrected uh, spt n value once the correction factor cn is known so cn this total term is nothing but we write it as cn correction factor okay so where nc here in the expression refers to that of the corrected n value after applying your overburden uh, correction nr indicates the observed n value observed n value in the sense the n value what you have determined from your uh, spt test and uh, sigma naught dash refers to that of your uh, uh, vertical effective stress uh, at that particular depth where you have performed your spt test in case if the ratio of this nc by nr that's nothing but your correction factor if generally it has to be in between uh, 0 0.45 to 2 only in case if the correction factor what you are getting is greater than 2 then your uh, the corrected nc value what you are uh, calculating should be simply divided with a factor which is 2 to obtain the spt n value that is to be used in the design 
are in the estimation of the bearing capacity of your soil so in case if this cn value what you are calculating if it is less than 2 no problem nc can be directly as it is calculated but however if the cn value what you have calculated is coming out to be greater than 2 then subsequently nc value what you have got cannot be directly used in estimating the bearing capacity of the soil or in finding out the properties of the soil rather that particular nc value has to be simply divided with 2 and that subsequent value what you are going to be getting there has to be used as a design value or has to be used in estimating the condition of the soil okay so whenever you have what is called as an overburden correction as well as the dilatancy correction okay first overburden correction has to be applied and then subsequently we should go on to apply what is called as your dilatancy correction for that particular soil okay this is the expression what is given uh, by uh, gibbs and holzman which is applicable if your uh, overburden uh, pressure existing at that depth where your uh, spt test is conducted uh, the overburden pressure is less than or equal to 280 kilopascals and for uh, dry or moist clean sand in such soils only this expression is valid and uh, we have got uh, some other empirical relation which is given by uh, peck hansen and uh, thornburn okay where that correction or uh, rather correction factor here once again n indicates nothing but nc and nr indicates your recorded value nc indicates your corrected value so the ratio of nc by nr is nothing but it is representing you what is called as your correction factor okay so this correction factor we are according to uh, peck hansen and thorburn in case if your overburden pressure at that depth where your spt test is conducted if the overburden pressure existing is less than or equal to 24 kilopascals then that correction factor the ratio of nc by nr okay so the ratio of that nc by nr has to be calculated from the standard chart which is given by them okay so in case if your overburden pressure is less than 24 kilopascal then we have to calculate your uh, correction factor uh, that is to be applied for your overburden correction to get the overburden corrected uh, spt value so the corresponding correction factor has to be compulsorily calculated only from this uh, standard chart what is given in case if the uh, overburden uh, pressure value is greater than 24 kilopascal then you can make use of this empirical relation what is available here to subsequently calculate your corrected n value for the overburden correction either you can use your standard chart or you can even use your empirical relation to subsequently calculate your uh, corrected spt n value uh, for overburden correction and likewise we have got some other empirical relation which is given by peg and uh, basra okay so where uh, in case if your uh, overburden pressure in the soil is less than 71.8 kilopascals in some books you might be finding it as uh, 75 kilopascals doesn't matter okay so if your overburden pressure is less than that value then we'll be using this expression to calculate your uh, corrected sptn value for overburden correction after applying overburden correction in case if your overburden pressure is greater than this particular value then the corrected sptn value is going to be uh, calculated from this particular expression these are all empirical relations we are not having much proper basis on uh, how those expressions are derived or so on so it's purely depending on uh, the test what those people have conducted on varieties of soils at different depths and based on which they have derived those empirical relations and uh, next is uh, the dilatancy correction so as we have already talked about so this particular dilatancy correction is more uh, preferable uh, to be applied in the case of silty soils or uh, fine sand deposits which are existing below the water table position which would develop pore water pressures which is not easily going to be uh, getting deposited but however in the case of your dense uh, soil deposits which are uh, existing below the water table in which spt test is conducted so you might even come across with some situations where negative pore water pressures would also build up which would uh, result in uh, increasing the shear strength of the soil so because of the increase in shear strength of the soil your uh, penetration uh, number that is you will have more resistance offered uh, against the penetration of your sampling tube so for which you will be required to give more number of blows so obvious that if more number of blows you are getting 
then uh, correct condition do not require this many number of blows to be given so that's the reason why you should apply what is called as your dilatancy correction in case if your observed sptn value at that particular location is exceeding 15 in case if the already uh, overburden correction is applied for that particular soil then uh, um, corrected uh, value of spt after applying overburden correction if it is greater than 15 then uh, we should go on to apply this dilatancy correction value in case if your spt n value what you have got is less than 15 no need to apply the dilatancy correction so Terzaghi and Peck in 1967 recommended uh, an expression for uh, determining the corrected uh, N value after applying your dilatancy correction. So what are the different factors that are going to be affecting the SPT N values? Okay, so the so-called SPT N values, what we are trying to determine. So that SPT N value is getting affected by what all uh, various factors okay the spt n value what you are going to be getting would depend on the attitude of the operator how he is operating that uh, equipment there and it also depends on uh, over driving condition of your uh, sampling tube where you are not properly uh, counting the number of blows where uh, the sampler got plugged by gravel gravel in the sense you had some gravelly soil or boulders in which you are trying to push this sampling tube uh, but obvious that your gravelly soil or your uh, boulders or uh, cobalt pebbles they will not allow your sampling tube get, uh, to get penetrated in the process you will see that your sampling tube gets damaged okay so subsequently the spt n value would also get affected because of <laughs> such kind of gravelly soil or uh, anything else that you are encountering while pushing your sampling tube and uh, your spt n value even depends on uh, the casing whatever you have provided in case if the casing provided is above the position of your uh, borehole then no problem in if that casing is uh, pushed even below the bottom of the borehole then your spt n value is what you are calculating is obviously having an effect and uh, if uh, the bottom of the borehole is not properly cleaned in the sense all the disturbed condition of the soil is not properly removed then the calculated spt n values will have an impact and likewise you have got various reasons which would certainly impact the condition of your spt n values what you have calculated so one has to understand clearly what could be the possible factors that i have to take into consideration while performing my spt test i should ensure that those problems should not be committed while performing my spt test so likewise you will have different uh, factors uh, you can uh, quickly go through this uh, slides uh, where you will be able to understand what are the various varieties of factors which could uh, hamper the condition of the spt n value which you are trying to calculate from the test Now, as I told you, like once the SPT N values are calculated, you have different uh, empirical relations available for finding out the various soil properties. So as I stated in the starting, so if the SPT N value is known, you can go on to determine the relative density of the soil. If the SPT N value is known, you can go on to find out your angle of sharing distance of the soil. You can go on to even find out your unconfined compressive strength of the soil from which you can go on to determine your uh, undrained uh, cohesion value of the soil. And likewise, you have got various empirical relations available in the literature. Some of those empirical relations requires what is called as a raw N value. Raw N value in the sense you should not be applying any dilatancy correction or overburden correction. As it is, whatever the N value that you have got from that particular test, that N value should only be substituted in some of those empirical relations. Whereas in some other empirical relations, you have to apply the corrected uh, N value. So you have to be very careful in using the different empirical relations that are available in the literature. If SPT N value is known, so should I directly substitute the SPT N value what I got from the test or should I substitute the corrected SPT N value and uh, accordingly I should uh, find out the corresponding properties of the soil based on your SPT test result. So uh, depending on uh, the relative density of the soil, let's say for example, if the relative density of the soil is in between 0 to 15%, uh, percent, we say the SPT N value is going to be somewhere, uh, sorry, other way, 
So if SPT and value of the soil is in between 0 to 4, then we uh, understand that the relative density of the soil is somewhere in between 0 to 50% and 15%. If the SPT and value is in between 4 to 10, the relative density of the soil is going to be somewhere in between 15 to 35%. If SPT and value is in between 10 to 30 or 30 to 50 or greater than 50. So accordingly, we'll be able to understand the condition of the soil, like whether the soil is very loose or existing in a loose state or a medium state or dense state or very dense state. So depending on which, the range of your relative density of the soil can also be accordingly understood. And uh, likewise, we can also understand uh, the unconfined compressive strength of the soil depending on your uh, SPT and value. So if the SPTN value is less than 2, the probable unconfined compressive strength of that cohesive soil could be less than 25 kilopascal. If SPTN value is in between 2 to 4, then uh, QU value could be in between 25 to 50. And likewise, for different uh, SPTN values, you'll have different unconfined compressive strength for that cohesive soil. And we have also have some standard charts which are given by uh, different people just to name here. Carter and Bentley gave some uh, standard chart here where if I know the SPT and value from your test, I can go on to determine the angle of sharing resistance value of that particular soil. Okay. So if SPT and value of that test is known, then uh, for that corresponding SPT and value, I can go on to determine what could be the probable uh, angle of sharing resistance value for that particular soil from the standard uh, chart. And likewise, this is another standard chart uh, which is going to help you in finding out what is called as your uh, angle of sharing resistance. That's nothing but angle of uh, internal friction value of the soil as well as the bearing capacity factors of that particular soil. So based on bearing capacity factors, we can go on to determine the uh, uh, bearing capacity of the soil. And uh, based on that SPTN value, as we said, uh, we can go on to determine your angle of uh, internal friction from this uh, single uh, standard chart what is available in the literature. Now let's quickly understand what are the advantages, disadvantages and subsequently the precautions that are uh, required to be taken in this uh, SPT test. So coming to the advantages, the test is said to be relatively quick when compared to some other tests and uh, it is simple to perform. Provides a representative soil sample representative soil sample in the sense while performing this test you are able to collect some soil sample though it is in disturbed state but still you are able to uh, collect that soil sample which will be useful for uh, determining various index properties uh, and uh, for knowing the corresponding uh, properties of the soil and this particular uh, test is relatively suitable for uh, dense soil layers and also in some cases of gravelly soil, but uh, yes, we also say this is uh, another uh, disadvantage also because in the case of gravelly soil deposit, you will find it difficult to push your uh, sampling tube into the ground. And one uh, major advantage what we have got from uh, this SPT test results is in the literature, if you look at with respect to the variety of field tests that uh, we have available we have got in the so-called course we have enormous empirical relations that are available in terms of your spt test data when compared to that of your uh, scpt test data or maybe uh, in compare uh, to that of your pressure meter test dilatometer test and so on okay so if you know your spt n value you have many empirical relations that are available so based on those empirical relations you can go on to find out the various other properties of the soil to reflect the original condition of the soil okay so based on that spt and value you can uh, find out or you can understand the soil behavior uh, by finding out the various other properties of the soils from those empirical relations Okay, so likewise, uh, the SPT test is an institute test that truly reflects the soil condition in terms of the soil skeleton structure, in terms of the stress, what that soil has been experiencing, in terms of the strains that are getting induced in that particular soil, in terms of the different confining stresses that are uh, getting developed in the soil at different depths. So the SPT results what you are getting SPT test value, SPTN value that you are getting is 
duly taking into consideration of the complete realistic soil condition what is existing in the field mostly uh, the soil which is there in undisturbed state the spt test can be performed in a wide range, a wide range of uh, soil conditions it need not be uh, performed only on sandy soil it can be performed in wide variety of uh, soil conditions this particular spt test can be performed and as i mentioned so you have got uh, numerous correlations for predicting the engineering properties with a good degree of uh, confidence so relatively with better accuracy you can go on to determine the various engineering properties knowing what is the sptn value of that particular soil and likewise you have got different uh, disadvantages also with regard to this particular uh, test you will not be uh, typically getting the continuous data of the soil continuous data of the soil means how the soil profile is changing continuously with depth how is the property of the soil continuously varying with the depth so that information you will not be able to get and uh, you will have a limited applicability of this spt test in the case of your cohesive soils and gravel soils cobalt soils and boulders because it would be difficult to penetrate or push your sampling tube into such kind of soil deposits it is somewhat slower than that of other methods due to sample retrieval because in the case of spt test your sampling tube is pushed into the ground you are taking out the sampling tube take, removing the soil out and then subsequently continuing the process of your spt test by extending the bore holes further at required depths till the required depths but when it comes to the case of some other tests like say standard cone penetration test in that case we are going to continuously performing the test throughout the depth in the soil strata and it is carried out relatively at a very faster uh, rate because in uh, static cone penetration test we are not collecting any soil sample so in such case obviously the time required for carrying out that test throughout the depth is relatively very very fast in addition to the overburden pressure uh, and relative density the sptn values is also said to be a function of your soil type particle size the age of that particular soil deposit and the subsequent stress history what that soil has experienced in the past samples that are obtained obviously from this spt test are uh, considered to be in disturbed state as i have mentioned so likewise you have different other uh, disadvantages that you have got from this spt test one of uh, such disadvantages though you are giving some uh, impact energy not that 100% of the energy is getting transferred because of the energy losses by the time the energy is getting transferred to the bottom of your split spoon sampler okay the greatest disadvantage of the spt test is lack of reproducibility of the test results let's say for example here at a depth of 2 meters i performed spt test and i got some sptn value just adjacent to this borehole itself immediately if i am carrying out my spt test at the same 2 meters depth i may not get the same spt n value what i have got earlier so reproducibility of the same spt results will not be possible so you might see some variation in the spt n values at the same depth what you had uh, here and uh, adjacent to the same uh, place adjacent to the next uh, borehole position only you might see the variation in your spt n values though the soil profile soil condition everything is same because of the attitude of the person who is operating it or various reasons whatever it could be so because of that your spt n values could uh, get altered and uh, there are certain precautions one has to take into consideration while uh, performing this spt test okay so your uh, split spoon sampler what you are going to be using should be in a proper uh, condition it should have proper uh, cutting edge and uh, you should ensure that your uh, drill rods what you are going to be using should be of standard specification they should not be bent in condition the hammer what you are going to be using should be freely falling minimizing your uh, frictional losses energy losses and other losses and you should maintain a standard free fall height of 76 cm or approximately 75 cm okay so before uh, performing your spt test the bottom of the borehole has to be properly cleaned for removing all the disturbed condition of the soil particles there which are existing in loose or disturbed state 
okay so in case if you are extending the borehole into what is called as a sandy soil deposit or a soft soil deposit you should ensure to provide your uh, casing and uh, you should uh, even to uh, you have to ensure to see that your casing is not provided beyond, beyond uh, the bottom of the borehole position you should not push your casing below the position of the bottom of the borehole so all these precautions has to be properly taken into consideration before you say that you are ready for performing your spt test in the field so what i conclude from this discussion is we understood what is mean by spt test how the spt test is to be conducted and ultimately what are we determining from this particular spt test so with this we'll conclude our discussion for today and in our next class we'll start talking about the other field test that is your uh, cone penetration test to be specific we are going to be discussing what is called as your static cone penetration test.